Maruchan superfans are everywhere. From the busy moms who want to deliver maximum flavor in a flash to dorm room diners who want to put some slurp in their step. There are a ton of copycats you could use, but if you want to bless your bowl, there's only one true Maruchan. Whether you choose instant lunch, ramen bowls, yakisoba, or restaurant quality gold, Maruchan is the only ramen worth obsessing over. Smiles for all, Maruchan. See what all the ramen hype is about at maruchan.com. It's the giving season, and food drives are everywhere. So today on CityCast Las Vegas, we're talking to Ray Lathrop. She's the director of a food pantry in Summerlin. She's going to talk with us about the do's and don'ts of donations and what products can actually do more harm than good. It's Monday, November 13th. I'm Sarah Lohman, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Ray, welcome to CityCast, first of all. Hi! I feel like it's not really my first time. No, 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 no. I mean, a full disclosure, Ray is David Figler's partner. We're so delighted to have you because we're very lucky to have a connection to such an important resource here in Las Vegas, but also the way to give us a little bit of insight on what it's like for you behind the scenes. So to start us off, you are the director at the Desert Spring Community Resource Center. Can you just tell us some of the resources that you offer? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so happy to be here. The Desert Spring Community Resource Center has been around for just a few short years. We started running a food program, and we've really expanded into trying to support our clients in every aspect that they may need, whether it's connecting them with other programs or services that they may be eligible for, trying to share some job opportunities and hiring fairs. But mostly, we really get to know the families that we serve and try to connect them on an individual level. The food pantry and mobile food distribution are kind of our core programs. And we've now served, I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands of people since we opened. In this last quarter, we served 7,500 people. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really a great way to connect with a community and for our neighbors and our volunteers and our staff to make an impact here in this Las Vegas Valley. Oh, that's so cool. This is a great transition because honestly, many of our listeners, they probably haven't been to a food pantry, or I think that some might want to access one and really don't know how or what's on offer. So can you walk us through your food pantry? Like what happens when you enter? What does it look like? How do you access the food? Yeah, totally. Well, first, if you want to find a food pantry, there's a great resource, which is 211. Or on Three Square's website, there's actually a map of all the food pantry and distribution sites in the valley. So I always tell people to start there. It's good to know. If you find us at the Desert Spring Community Resource Center, we take appointments for our pantry hours during the week. We try really hard to have morning hours, and we've opened evening hours for people that work late, too. For us, we distribute uh, food through the Emergency Food Assistance Program. So clients of ours, our neighbors that we serve, um, need to have an eligibility check, but it's really easy for people to get access to the food that we have. We actually have set up a client choice food pantry, which means that all of our food is out on shelves. Great. And we have volunteers walk through the pantry with our clients and shopping carts, mostly just to manage some of our inventory. But we try to make it really clear that families are picking what kinds of foods they want to eat. We try to reduce food waste in that way and make sure that our food is appropriate for the family that's there. That's so awesome. Yeah. On distribution days, it's a little bit less choice-y. We kind of just put food that's been delivered right in people's cars. But the pantry, we've really tried to establish not only some practices around trying to diversify the food we offer. We try really hard to have fresh fruits and vegetables. And then we also purchase food and receive donated food from kind of anyone else in the community. 
So let's talk about that donated food, Ray, because we've chatted about this a little bit and you've already sort of blown my mind. So, you know, it is the giving season mm-hmm. and we are seeing food drives anywhere, everywhere as a part of that, you know, in this time really between Thanksgiving and New Year's, right? So first of all, let's go with the don'ts. What are oh. some of the most ludicrous items you've received as donations at the pantry? Well, I think some pretty outrageous ideas as giving a food pantry non-food items. Yep. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I showed up and someone had donated some box of hair dye, which really didn't make any sense. We'll take some household items, some hygiene products too. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are looking for deodorant or shampoo or something else. But I would say generally think about donating food. Food, number one. And also... <laughs> We get a lot of people that are, like, cleaning out their pantry. And if Mm. you haven't eaten that food in a couple of years or Mm. if it's not appetizing to you, I think just because someone's coming to a food pantry doesn't necessarily mean they'll want it either. Mm -hmm. Um, So we try to think and steer donors and food drives into the idea of if we're setting up a grocery store, what kind of things would they like to see themselves? We I see it. I think that's great. I was just like, oh, so yeah. people that are going to a food pantry are also people and they want to they eat are. good and delicious food yes. just like everyone else, right? Yes, they are. Just because they need to accept um, donated food or maybe might be in a tough spot financially for their household right now, it doesn't mean that they only want to eat canned salmon. So (laughs) we try really hard to diversify the food options. In fact, we've implemented a program called Supporting Wellness at Pantries, where our shelves are actually color-coded with red and yellow and green. So we've gone through the trouble of sorting the food by nutritional value. Mm. And that is green is something that's low fat, low sugar, low salt, just to let clients know like, hey, this is the healthy option here. This is something that you should eat every day. This is good for your growing kids. This is good for the seniors. Red foods aren't bad, but they're things that maybe you shouldn't eat every single meal. Also, with something like a box of macaroni and cheese, someone also has to have butter and yep. milk and a way to cook it. Yep. And so that will work for some of your clients, but that's not going to work for all of your clients. Yeah. And a lot of those government staples and other food donation drives gives us canned goods. And so we've got a whole box of stocked can openers, just in case a family doesn't have one already. That's so smart. So we really have to think about how some of that food is cooked. Very often, we have clients regularly every week that are actually living in their car. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a big reality in today's kind of economic struggles with a lot of families. And so we have to be really considerate about where someone's going to going to be cooking or preparing their meal. We also have a couple of individuals that we serve that live in nearby maybe mobile home parks or maybe they rent a room in the area and they may not have access to an Mm -hmm. entire kitchen. So when it comes to preparing, sometimes we receive a lot of frozen protein, some, you know, chicken or pork or this last week we're inundated with white fish. There are a lot of families that re- realistically cannot cook those types of things. Can you give us a couple like greatest hits? If I am assembling my shopping cart to bring to the food pantry, what are five items I should put in there? Well, I don't think anyone's going to refuse a really fresh dozen eggs and milk and vegetables and fruit. The reality is that when you're coming to a food pantry, it's really hard to eat fresh fruits and vegetables. So that has been our experience. That's where we spend most of our money in order to make sure that we have really well-rounded food products and meals for our our neighbors. You know, I'm glad you're saying that because I feel like that's not what we're taught culturally in terms of like, yeah, you bring canned goods to a food pantry. I don't think a lot of people realize that they accept fresh produce donations. We do just because we're able to move that stock really quickly. If there's a food pantry that operates more on a weekly basis, it might not be realistic for them. So Mm. really, I encourage a lot of people, if they want to create a donation, if they want to do a drive, 
the very first step is to get in contact with the recipient, the charity that you're going to give that food to, establish a relationship, talk to them about the clients they serve, talk to them about what kind of food storage they have available. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're not giving them a bunch of frozen things if they don't have freezers. Uh. And that happens a lot. You know, I think food drives, you think about canned goods because it's a box at your office or it's a box at the school that then gets delivered later. But maybe that's not really kind of their biggest need. And so mm-hmm. making sure that the pantry is in communication with you about what kind of program they offer and who they offer that their food to. So for us, for instance, in the last year, 30% of our clients are Asian. And mm-hmm. we want to make sure that there's culturally appropriate food. Sometimes we have to write out recipes. You know, we have so many lentils or Mm -hmm. um, split peas. Maybe that's not relevant really culturally to the clients that we serve. And so we want to make sure that what we have goes to use. And so we provide recipes for families. But in an instance where we already can have a relationship with a donor who can immediately donate the food that our clients are going to use the most. That's mm-hmm. kind of most ideal. I mean, and it sounds like if anyone listening is up in Summerlin and has a garden, if you've got, yeah, Ray just made yes. the happiest face. Big you know, smile. We would love. We know what happens during yeah. tomato season and zucchini mm, season. It's true. You just get inundated. You know, a food pantry is a great place to send all that produce that you might feel overwhelmed mm-hmm. with, too. In fact, just last week, we have some, we, we're surrounded by neighbors, uh, by residential development. Someone dropped off a bag of pomegranates from their Ooh. tree. Someone oh, yeah. grabbed a, your citrus, dropped your off a bag trees. of apples, too. Your, your um, passion fruit vines. Like, these are all great donations, right? Yeah. And these are all plants that when they come into season, they are just busting out food. Trust me, as a gardener myself, I have too many grapes in just one week and then they're mm-hmm. all gone, right? We all know how that works. <laughs> Well, so this is so great. So it sounds like if someone is planning to organize a food drive, one of the best things to do is to really talk with the organization they're working with and talk about uh, their needs and their facilities. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my question on that is, you know, is a food drive the best way to help? I mean, is it better than just donating money? I mean, money is always great. Anyone in a nonprofit is going to take your money because it takes staff time and so many other pieces of infrastructure to make a food pantry work. Mm -hmm. You know, you tend to forget about how we check in clients on computers. We have to have internet. We take appointments by a phone. We want to make sure that we have all of our policies and procedures in place, which requires a lot of staff time to make sure that we're doing things right. And we also manage a state grant, which means that we have to monthly report how many people we've served, and we have to give them all this data around how we've purchased food and how much. So it takes a lot to make a food pantry work. It's not just the food products. Mm -hmm. I will say, I mean, having food products donated alleviates one piece of the puzzle, but having some also some financial contributions is really helpful to making sure the overall program runs really well. But we also... I would say I don't know any food pantry that doesn't run off of volunteer commitment. Uh, so giving your time is a huge help. You know, I I just volunteered over the weekend for my friend's charity slice out of hunger. And one of the things that they did, I volunteered at the Las Vegas Pizza Fest and they arranged for a local food bank to come and do a pickup of all of the leftover pizza. So it's like, People got pizza that night. Yeah. It's it's really it's really awesome. Yeah. I and mean, it sounds like too that you know we focus a lot on charitable giving this time of year, but if people really want to support year round, volunteering is really the way to go. Yeah. I like to tell people that while, you know, food drives are great during Thanksgiving cuz we're all worried about what we're going to cook and what we're going to eat yeah. during the holidays, but every month, every week, every day of the year, people go hungry. And yeah. so if you think about donating a box of food or participating in a food drive or a donation drive in any way the month of November or December, just think in the back of your head about how you might be able to sustain a little bit more giving throughout the other 10 months of the year. Because it is a real struggle. And we know that with the school season and how different our, our economy is really based on summer influx and lulls during certain holidays and 
all of those things make for a little bit more of a tumultuous economy here. And we yes. want to make sure that it's really easy for people to get access to food, one of the most basic needs, every single day of the year. All right, Ray, this is this is our last question. Do you have a favorite moment from your time working at the, the center, at the food pantry? Oh, boy, there's so many. You know, we have a family that comes. Actually, they volunteer, but they're and and they also are some of our clients for generations. Mm. So great grandmother all the way down to great granddaughter. They all show up and they're just really happy to be there and surrounded by the community. And I, I hope kind of the positive environment that we've created. Many of our neighbors have turned into really committed volunteers. Mm. And that's wonderful, too. It's really incredible how cohesive or I guess at least how open people are to creating relationships and community in our area. I think it's surprising for a lot of people to learn that more than half of the people that we serve or just about 50 percent come from a Summerlin zip code. Mm -hmm. The need for food, the challenges of everyday expenses are not limited to one zip code or one area of town. And so we see a lot of families just trying to get by. We have some families of, you know, single dads and their kids, and they come so eager. We always have a bucket of candy, and it's just so great to see them. Some of our neighbors and our volunteers have established very long relationships and very deep relationships, and they care about whose birthday it is. Just this last week, someone made a birthday cake for one of our mm. neighbors. We have really worked hard to make sure that our neighbors feel welcome and that they're part of our work and that they provide input to how we grow and change and adapt um, as we've continued to see an increase in demand. You know, one of the things I've loved about this conversation is from working in food, a lot of my adult career, I know that there's a lot of sort of morality prejudice. You know, if you are attending a food bank, we have to watch what you're eating, that there are all these restrictions, there's proposed restrictions on how people can use food stamps and grocery stores that they can't buy soda, da, da, da. But of course, if someone has the wealth and the freedom to buy their own food, they're not under those same restrictions and speculation and all of this sort of moral panic. So I really love that what your center is doing is it's supporting everybody's needs. It's supporting their healthy foods needs. But like, come on, like it's the holidays. It's It was just yeah. Halloween. Like everyone also deserves a, a piece of candy if they want it to. And I think that that humanizing is so important. Yeah. For the last couple of weeks, we've been bursting at the seams with Takis. <laughs> There's <laughs> been so many bags of Takis. I mean, but that's a necessity. <laughs> right. It's a food group, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, we received some donations from a local bread distributor and some of the other stuff that grocery stores aren't able to kind of move. We end up getting some of that stuff. So it's really fun to see kind of the variety sometimes. But yeah, I think the real challenge that our food systems have put within the food pantry space is just a real lack of choice. Mm. And I think that that's very reflective in just anyone's experience with uh, poverty. I also think that um, having that freedom of choice, I think that we don't recognize how empowering that is and Absolutely. how humanizing that feels. Yeah. Our neighbors deserve the agency. You know, we try to give them their autonomy, their independence. We listen to them. We provide space for them. It's really important that this isn't, I've never wanted to create an organization that is transactional in any nature. Well, Ray, as someone who has been food insecure at different points in my life, I genuinely appreciate the work that you and the Desert Spring Community Resource Center is doing for our community. And um, that's where you want to reach out if you want to donate food, money, or maybe some of your time. Desert Spring Community Resource Center. We've been talking to Ray Lathrop, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. I'll see you around sometime soon. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you.
That's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend? Rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Take care. Yeah. yeah. Do you? I burped. I ruined the nice moment. <laughs> Keep it in. Keep it in. <laughs> oh, God.